Hey guys, welcome to Fire Racer Workshop and in today's video we are going to be checking out another experiment on ARCAD. Now the aim for the experiment is to plot the input and output characteristics of a common emitter transistor. Now for this particular uh, experiment we are going to be using the 2N2222 transistor. Now this is an NPN BGT so I'm just going to show you the data sheet of this particular transistor over here. Okay, so this is the, this is the transistor, so 2 n uh, 4 times 2 a transistor so this is an NPN BGT and this is the most common type of BGTs that we use and this is also like dirt cheap so you can see the maximum collector emitter voltage is 40 volts DC the collector base voltage is 70 volts DC so these are some of the parameters that you need to have in mind and the parameter that you need to have in mind is the gain of this so the gain of this transistor will be present somewhere around here you can see the DC gain so this is the beta value of the transistor or the HFE value of the transistor so you need to have an idea about this thing and so another thing to keep in mind is that your collector emitter voltage should not exit the 40 volts DC mark so otherwise it will just enter the breakdown voltage and your transistor is just gonna blow up so with that in mind let's just simulate the experiment and I'm gonna be linking this data sheet down below in the description box so you can easily check it out another thing you can just see so it can just display a maximum power of 625 milliwatts and the maximum like the current the continuous current that it can take is the continuous collector current is 600 milliamp DC but in this data sheet itself all the parameters etc have been tested for a maximum of 500 milliamp so this is what current like will be like uh, around if we are just gonna go to the maximum parameters and all so 500 milliamp is the way to go so we're not gonna go higher than that so with that in mind let's just simulate this experiment so let me just open up my ORCAD software I'm just gonna fire it up okay so the page is loaded up let's just cross up this chart up page first of all it's just a pain in the I don't know why I just like feel that okay so it's just a bit annoying so let me just import the part so you have to just click on the P key of a keyboard click on it now you can see the part windows has just opened up now we're gonna type in the transistor name that's the 2n 4 times 2 okay so now you can see we have got our part over here right here and you can see the simulation profile is also available you can see the parameter like it's just like it has a piece by model available for this particular transistor so let me just place it over here and we need to power supplies so VDC is what we need let's just double tap on this and we need two of these babies so first one will act will like give the base it's the voltage that it needs to like function and second one will give the load its current and voltage so we need two more resistors we need two resistors so we're gonna go with analog resistors because these have the simulation profile that has that has been enabled so please go with the R analog so otherwise your circuit won't work and we're just gonna place our resistor in between this thing and in between this thing right here so another way to identify the tr which is the emitter of the transistor is to see this arrow so if this arrow is pointing like if the transistor is having this arrow on this leg so this particular one it will be the emitter this will be the base over here on which this like this line has been drawn and this will be the collector of your transistor so what we're gonna do is now we're just gonna wire this up and then we're just gonna set up some naming and all so let me just quickly wire it up okay so our wiring has been completed now what we're gonna do is now we're just gonna select some naming schemes and all for these transistors so let me just straighten up this file now first of all let's just place our ground as well so 0 CAPSYM this is the ground that we need just place it over here we just need one ground because all this is like internally short at all so this one I'm just gonna place it this one will be around 40 volts so as you saw that the maximum breakdown voltage is 40 volts so we're just gonna set it to the maximum value we can just change it afterwards but right now let's just set it to 40 volts now I've done some quick calculations on this particular experiment and what I found is that so according to the beta value of the transistor and the type of graphs that we need we are just gonna uh, leave the resistor as 1k we're just gonna change it to 80 ohms be specific in your values otherwise your graph is gonna look a bit weird and this one will be 5 volts now first of all I'm just planning for the output characteristics so we'll just see for the input characteristics in a while and let's just change this to VBB so this will provide the base with the voltage and let's just change it to uh, let's say VC or something like that so VCC we are just gonna or VCE because it's the common emitter configuration so VCE okay 
Now we're just gonna import two voltage points on this particular experiment. So voltage probes we are gonna employ. So VCC we're gonna type in. We're just gonna click on the VCC CAPSYM and we're gonna place one here to measure the collector emitter voltage and over here we're just gonna measure the base emitter voltage. So I'm just gonna name it accordingly. So it will be VCE voltage collector emitter collector emitter voltage and this will be VBE so base emitter voltage okay so name it accordingly so that so in that way you will be able to differentiate it in your graph so be careful of that now we're gonna set up our simulation profile file I hope you all know by this time now how to create a new simulation profile just click on it just name in simulation profile whatever you want I'm just gonna name it trial hell anything you want so let's just create now simulation profile has been created our window is just gonna pop up over here you can see this is the simulation settings that we're gonna set we want it to be on the DC sweep and we want the primary as well as the secondary sweep. okay just be careful of that now on the primary sweep what we need is what we need to do is we need to vary this particular voltage now we need to vary the voltage that is provided to the um, to the uh, to this load so we're just gonna first of all type in the name of this power supply VCE because we want to test out like how much can this like for example like this is the output characteristics now I'll just like tell you all the story in the graph so let me just first of all set the simulation profile so start value is gonna be 0 end value is gonna be at 40 and I want it at the increment of 0 0.01 because I want my graph to look like really sharp and really precise so therefore I'm just going with a lower increment if your laptop or computer does not have like enough processing power or something like that just go with an increment of 0.1 otherwise your laptop might just like take a lot of time to like create a simulation profile for 0.01 steps so for the primary sweep, sweep our voltages are all set and for the secondary sweep now we're just gonna type in the name of the second power supply that is this one that is attached to the base of the transistor that's the VBB okay so start value is just gonna be uh, let's just say 1 volt end value is just gonna be 6 because we want 6 ratings and we want it in an increment of 1 volt okay so what will happen is first of all your simulation will start with the value of 1 volt okay and then it will just trigger the primary sweep okay then at 1 volt at 1 volt uh, base voltage okay so the voltage that this power supply is providing us is just gonna uh, do the entire primary sweep okay it will go from 0 to 40 volts in a step of 0 0.1 volts okay and then it will again switch to secondary and then it will like increment the voltage by one so now the base will be at 2 volts and then again the primary sweep is just gonna increase the value of this thing so this will be like a cycle so first of all the primary sweep is just gonna repeat for each and every secondary sweep value so this is how you're just gonna set your simulation and now I guess we are all done over here so primary sweep is set secondary sweep is set just please make sure to just like uh, take this uh, like check this checkbox right here and we're just gonna click on apply and okay okay so let's just simulate the circuit let's just run the simulation it will take some time to create the simulation and there you go this is simulation so our simulation has been complete so it's 100 percent complete let's just go to the plot settings and we're just gonna change the access settings access variable we only want the voltage in this one and we want the voltage at the base collector so this is the voltage that we need on our x-axis if you just look at any uh, like right now on your screen I'm just like showing you uh, output characteristics of a transistor so a BJT so you can see that generally the graph is plotted between the collector emitter voltage and the collector current so let's just hit ok uh, voltage is all set so let's just hit ok ok and now you can see uh, it's just like all the parameters like all the x-axis has been set now let's just go to trace add trace and what we need is only current so what we need is the current across the R2 resistor okay so R2 resistor was the one through which the current was flowing so this is the R2 resistor and there's one more thing that you need to note down is that you have to just select the negative value because the R2 resistor however resistors don't have polarity but in the simulation now this current will be detected as a negative current so we're just gonna, we're just gonna like uh, type in a negative sign over here and just click on IR2 so this will like uh, measure the current across the resistor R2 so 
IR2 is the current that's flowing across the resistor and we're just going to hit OK. Now you can see we have just got ourselves our output characteristics curve. Now you can see over here though this is just called so this part of the graph is called the saturation region. In this part of the graph your base current is just high enough to like um, so that your collector if you vary your uh, collector base volt like if you just vary your um, power supply right here so it's just going to vary the current across this resistor okay so th therefore this is called the saturation region in which like the base current has just saturated the transistor and it will like it will like not act in a normal way and this part of the graph where we obtain this straight line now if you like increase like if you like increase the uh, voltage like if, the, if you increase the voltage value on this particular power supply okay so the current ain't gonna change by much so this is called the active region of this transistor so over here you can see the current like stays constant even if we increase the voltage and the VCE that's the collector emitter voltage okay so this is the voltage that's across the transistor this is not across the resistor so the resistor power that's dissipated by the resistor is gonna remain the same even if this has been increased okay so I'm just I guess I'm just showing you a screenshot so actually this is the real this is a real experiment so actually I've performed this experiment uh, ahead of time so I can just like show you the entire tutorial so we can also like change this property so if you like if you like to um, for example like make your trace thick or something like that so I guess I've not shown you this thing in the past so I'm just like showing you, you showing it to you now so you can also change the color so for example I just love red color okay there you go like, um, uh, just like um, make the axis uh, like the range the data range of the axis uh, as user defined so for example it's just going from 0 volt to 38 volts now you can just like type in two volts over here okay hit okay now you can see over here so it has just like uh, plotted like it, ha it is just showing me the graph for zero to two volts and it will not it will like not show me the graph that is like uh, so it will just zoom into the x-axis so this is how if you want to just like measure precisely all your values or if you want to see how your signal is actually looking like so you can just use this thing I'm just gonna go back and change it to auto range and hit okay this is another thing that you might want to learn is cursor so if you like to measure your voltage value and current value you can use the cursors now just go to trace and in the for now let me just disable the cursor once go to trace and there's a option of cursor just click on it like there will be a sub menu and just like click on display this will enable your cursor and depending upon at which part of the graph you are on like for example in this particular graph we have just selected the secondary sweep so there are multiple graphs on a single on a single uh, graph paper or something like that so if you just like if you just like uh, move your cursor up and down so you're just gonna select a particular graph so you can over here you can see these are the values that we are getting so this is like so this is these are the x values and these are the y values so x value is around like at particular this particular thing is 8.3891 um, volts and the y value so the current value that I'm getting is 147.8 something milliampere so this is just really cool if you want to measure your current etc so let's just move on to the input characteristics now coming to the input characteristics now for this particular input characteristics what you're gonna do is you're just gonna measure the voltage that's that you apply to the base of the transistor and you're gonna see the current that's flowing through the base of the transistor now you're just gonna measure the voltage at the base base emitter voltage that you're gonna measure it means the voltage at this point and at this point okay this is the base emitter voltage and you're just gonna see how much current is entering into the base of the transistor now and then you're just gonna uh, for example now you're just gonna sweep this voltage and you're just gonna change this particular voltage right here so this is the collect like the common uh, the, co uh, the common emitter voltage this is what you will change in your circuit and like in steps like we did for the base voltage in the output characteristics we are just gonna change this in steps now for the input characteristics let's just go to the simulation profile now actually first of all if you would like to do so let's just go let's just like make it 20 volts at maximum okay so you may also leave it at 20 volts like if you may if you if you want like you may also leave it at 40 volts this ain't gonna affect anything because we just like we are just changing each and everything in the simulation profile so for the primary sweep now this time we're just gonna select the VBB okay that's the 
uh, that's this this power source right here that's just providing the base with the current so we're just gonna go with this chart value of let's say okay so zero volts is okay so an n value of five and in the increments now i'm just going to increase the increments because at this particular point the voltage value we are taking is less so we want more readings in our circuit to get a precise graph so i'm just going to take 0.001 uh, volts increment now we're just going to go to the secondary sweep and now we're just going to type in vce as a voltage at common collector this particular voltage source now we want this to sweep Okay, so we want uh, readings for multiple of this VCE. So let's just do a chart value of zero, N value of 20, and then the steps of five. So in total, we are gonna obtain ourselves four graphs for this particular setting, because it's just gonna take the reading, actually five graphs. So it's just gonna take it reading at zero volts, then five volts, then 10 volts, then 15 volts, then 20 volts. So this is how it will uh, take the readings. So we're just gonna uh, primary sweep is okay, secondary sweep is okay, both are enabled and we are on DC sweep. Let's just hit apply, hit OK and just hit on run simulation. It just it will just take some time to run the simulation. I can see the simulation window has just popped up. We're just gonna go to plot, access settings, set access variable, and we want the access variable to be the voltage that's across the base. So we want the base emitter voltage. So this is the VBE. It's just gonna hit OK and then in the trace we want to add a trace and in this we want the, cu the current that's flowing through the base of the transistor so that's the current that's flowing across the R1 resistor over here you can see this is the R1 resistor so we want the current that's flowing through this resistor to measure the current that's going into the base so as the base is in series with this resistor so we're just gonna hit on R1 and hit OK now you can see our output characteristics has been plotted let's just change the trace property so you people can see it better just go with a wider pattern and let's just go with a red color you can see this is how our trace is looking like so this one this particular graph is at zero volts so when your collector emitter voltage so at your the common collector volt the common emitter voltage over here when this power supply is at zero volts okay this is the graph that we are getting and this graph might look similar to you now you might recognize it as a PN junction diode, the output correct, the VI characteristics of PN junction diode, and you are absolutely correct. The transistor that we are using, the NPN transistor, the NPN BGT that we are using, the emitter base path is essentially a PN junction diode. So you can see at zero volts, it's just gonna be similar. Like it will be identical to a PN junction diode. Over here, you can see there are multiple graphs, like there are multiple curves. So at five volts, so this is the curve that we are obtaining. So at this particular point, the voltage that is like that 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 we are supplying to the, uh, for example, the um, the BGT has reached its fully on state at this particular point. Now, if you just like drive the base current, like like if you just like provide more voltage to the base, is the current is just gonna ride steadily across that's flowing through the base, and this will eventually like burn up our transistor. And similar case over here. So at this particular point, the with the collector emitter voltage has just like reached its minimum value and if you just apply more base voltage at this particular point then a huge amount of current will flow through the base of the transistor and that you don't want you just want it to be at this particular point so this is at fully on state at this point so similar case for here and here as well so this is at 20 volts this is this particular graph is at 15 volts this particular graph is at 10 volts this is at 5 volts and this is at 0 volts i'm talking about this power supply right here the voltage the collector the common emitter voltage okay so over here we have obtained our output characteristics that you can see on your screen right now and your input characteristics that i'm seeing on my screen right now okay so that's all for this video if you want a further explanation for the video i'll upload a second part of this video uh, if you want it just comment down below what all you need me to explain in this particular experiment i'll explain it all and thank you for watching the video please do like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye